you want an exposure to a market or an everything asset. they need in one place. We're the world's foremost authority on materials, advisors and institutions. Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wall and here with me today is Job Curtis, manager of the gold-rated City of London Trust. Hello Job. Hello. So you're here today to highlight three UK stocks. What's yes. the first one today? Well, the first one is a house builder. I think the house building sector is very attractive at the moment. There's a shortage of homes in this country. And I particularly like Taylor Wimpy, this uh, company with a long land bank. Um, so it's got like over five years of um, plots of land to build on, which is bought quite well and at cheap prices. And in addition, I think you'll see a very good dividend flow from the stock going forward. And how affected by things such as interest rates are house builders? Well, they are affected, but I would see interest rates staying low. I mean, inflation is, is very low in the UK at the moment. And, um, you know, if the interest rates move up, it'll only be quite slowly from this very low base. So it is something to bear in mind. But I, I, I wouldn't be suggesting it if I didn't feel the interest rates are going to stay relatively low f for the foreseeable future. And what's your second stock? Uh, my second stock is Barclays, which is some um, well-known bank. And, um, you know, obviously Barclays came through the financial crisis without having aid from the British government. Um, but it obviously had a difficult time, but it, it avoided kind of part nationalisation by the UK. It carried on paying its dividend pretty well, it stopped paying dividend for a couple of quarters, but it um, carried on paying a dividend. Um, they're moving the company away from investment banking, which is still an important part of it, but it's going to have less emphasis and more towards retail banking. And I think as this happens, it should get a re-rating. At the moment, it's priced at a discount to its book value of about 15%. And I think if it, it could well move on to a premium to its book value as it becomes more of a retail bank. And in addition, the dividend yield, which at the moment is under 3%, could move up quite nicely over the years as it makes this shift. And Barclays wasn't part nationalised, as you point out, but it was tarred with the brush of sort of the many other financial institutions. It hit hard by PPI claims, for example. Yes. I mean, how much of that is behind the bank or, or is some of that sentiment, that negative sentiment and the shocks to come part of the reason yes. why it's cheap? Well, I think you're absolutely right. I think the negative sentiment is, is a big factor in um, what has left these cheap valuations. And I think within reason they've had to, I think, pre-financial crisis, the banks operate on much too little capital. And then the financial crisis hit and, you know, we've had to learn a big lesson. But it, and we are now talking seven years later. And uh, I think, um, you know, the banks have been able to rebuild their capital ratios um, to a large degree. I mean, PPI has been a huge problem for the banks, but we must be seeing through the worst of PPI now. They're still paying some bills and will continue to do so. But we've seen the worst of it. So I think going forward, it looks a lot more interesting. And what's the third stock then today? Uh, the third stock is the business outsourcing process, um, which is called Capita, which is one of the, um, it's the biggest company in the UK in this field. And it's um, got a business that spans both central government, local government, and also the private sector. And this is really an area of solid growth. I mean, the contracts for, say, central government in a general election year, there won't be a huge amount of new contracts coming up for grabs. But, um, but there are plenty of contracts in the private sector and continuing in local government. And, um, you know, Capita is able to improve efficiency and productivity and, you know, through its scale is able to bring a lot of benefits to, to its customers. And I think this is not a company that looks dramatically cheap in the short term. Its dividend yields about approaching 3%, but it will, I think produce steady growth and um, visible returns over, over the years. Um, obviously, we don't know who's going to be in government by the end of this year. Um, but all of the, the major parties are suggesting some cuts in different areas. How much does austerity have an impact on, on a company such as Capita? Is there a risk that those contracts will be reduced? Well, I think, you know, they do look at, obviously, whether the contracts are giving Capita excess profitability. But I think, in some respects, Capita is part of the solution because it can, um, it's a, the government is able to hand business over to Capita and they can do it to the cheaper um, less less costly rate than the civil service or central under central government control. So, I would see on a you know these trends take a long time, but on a longer term basis, I think I think capital is part of the solution as, rather than being a problem because of economies of scale. Yeah, exactly, and just the skills they have at, at managing um, these these projects. Job, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.